Hello, I'm Gavin Watson. Here I will talk about reducing HSM reliance in payments through proxy re-encryption. This is joint work with Siva Gadam, Atul Lux, and Rohit Sinha. PINs, or personal identification numbers, are a primary method for performing user authentication. The use of a short four-digit PIN is now a common method for performing cardholder verification at a point of sale. When we enter our PIN on a point of sale device, it has to be encrypted to ensure its secure and confidential transportation to the issuing bank where the PIN will be verified. The reality of this transportation of the PIN from the point of sale to the issuing bank is a little more complicated than what it might seem at first. First, note that we're not directly communicating with the issuing bank. After it leaves the point of sale, the encrypted PIN must traverse a number of different intermediaries before it gets routed finally to the issuing bank. At each of these hops along the chain, a different layer of encryption will be used. When we first of all enter our PIN on the point of sale device, it will be encrypted using a symmetric encryption key. This encrypted PIN is then sent to the first intermediary along the path. At the payment gateway, it will first of all be decrypted using the black key and then encrypted under a new key, the yellow key, which would be shared with the merchant bank. This decrypt encrypt operation is known as a pin translation and is performed within a special hardened appliance known as a hardware security module. Hardware security modules or HSMs are used for performing cryptographic operations securely and for securing those cryptographic keys. They are tamper resistant to ensure that no key or intermediate plain text would be exposed during the pin translation operation. As we traverse along the path, a different pin translation is performed between each hop. At the merchant bank, we decrypt from the yellow key and then encrypt under the red key, then from the red key to the blue key, before finally at the issuing bank, inside their HSM, a decryption operation is performed to obtain the pin, and then a verify operation is used to match it against the pin on record. We note here that there's a pairwise uh, setup of these different keys. Each neighboring party has a shared symmetric encryption key, which is used to help translate the PIN as it goes across the path to the issuing bank. HSMs are special purpose hardware, and as such, they come at a cost. They can be expensive and can sometimes be hard to manage. We want to look to see if a different approach is possible. Can we reduce reliance on HSMs using more advanced cryptographic techniques. Of course, with that in mind, we still must keep some restrictions with the particular application we are thinking about. For pins, we must make sure that we never expose the pins in plain text out with trusted hardware. We also must keep in mind that we can only do pairwise key setup between neighboring parties. And then finally, because payments is primarily standards-based, and interoperability should be ensured, that means we need to keep the maximal possible amount of backwards compatibility. So finding a different solution, how can we move an H away from HSMs? Well, a naive approach would just be to think, well, why don't we just use public key encryption? At the POS device, we have a, perhaps a public key for the issuing bank, which we could get from the card. The card was issued by the issuing bank. So if it can put the public key there, this can be given to the POS, can then use that to directly encrypt the PIN under something known by the issuer bank. Then no PIN translation is required because it's encrypted directly under something which the issuer bank can decrypt. The problem with this is it doesn't have that level of backwards compatibility. It would require significant changes to the EMV standard and it would require changes to all cards. That means you'd have to reissue all cards that are in the field, which would come with significant cost. So how about a different approach? Can we use a more advanced technique? Well, what we want to look at is something known as proxy re-encryption. What is proxy re-encryption? Proxy re-encryption allows you to delegate the decryption ability to someone else. Consider the example of Alice and Bob. They work in the same office. Alice receives encrypted emails, which she has to deal with day to day. 
However, when Alice goes on vacation, she'll be out of the office. And so Bob would need to decrypt Alice's emails to be able to do the work that she would do while she's on vacation. So without Alice giving her secret key to Bob, how can you do this? Well, performing proxy re-encryption, we would take any ciphertext encrypted for Alice, and then using a special re-encryption operation performed by the proxy, it would translate ciphertext for Alice, encrypted under her key, to ciphertext for Bob, encrypted under his key, which he can then decrypt and do the work that needs to be done on that data. In a little bit more detail, if you think about a public key encryption scheme, it consists of three algorithms, a key generation algorithm, an encryption algorithm, and a decrypt decryption algorithm. This is the same for proxy re-encryption with the addition of two further algorithms. A re-key generation algorithm, which takes as input two different keys and will output a re-encryption key, which goes from the source key to the destination key. And then a re-encrypt operation, which takes as input this re-encryption operation and a ciphertext, and will translate that ciphertext to be for party I, to be and then a ciphertext for party J. I'd just like to note briefly that there's two different flavors of PRE, and this results in two different types of re key generation algorithm. There's bidirectional PRE schemes, where the re key generation algorithm takes as input the source secret key and the destination secret key to output the re key. And then the unidirectional setting, where the input is the source secret key and the destination public key. Okay. Back to the payment setting. How do we want to apply proxy re-encryption to payments to reduce our reliance on HSMs? Well, in the traditional picture, we have all these different HSMs along the way. We want to eliminate the HSMs on these intermediary hops. Of course, we can't eliminate the HSM at the final hop because that's where we have to decrypt the pin, look at it and verify that. And we want to keep that operation all performed within trusted hardware so as not to expose the plain text pin. Okay, so we've eliminated these HSMs in the intermediary hops. What are we replacing them with? Well, that's with our proxy re-encryption. Now at these intermediary hops, we're gonna use the re-encryption key and the re-encrypt operation to translate between the different keys as it passes up along the path to the issuing bank. The advantages of using this PRE scheme um, are that we've replaced HSMs, so we don't need any specialized hardware hardware that can sometimes come at cost. We're working in a pure software solution. So that means we get better scaling and elasticity than we would with a hardware-based approach. And then finally, PRE has equivalent level of security because this re-encrypt operation does not expose the plaintext during re-encryption. So as I just mentioned, we now need to look at what the scheme is that we're going to use. So after an extensive literature review, we saw that none of the schemes that are available in the literature today exactly match with the requirements we have. So we have to come up with a new scheme um, for, for our setting. At a high level, the essence of our scheme is to take a bidirectional proxy re-encryption scheme and then use it under the hybrid encryption paradigm where we have a key encapsulation mechanism and a data encapsulation mechanism. Here, our PRE scheme will form the CAM, and then we'll use a symmetric encryption scheme for performing the DEM and the actual encryption of the PIN. So the CAM borrows ideas from the original BABS PRE scheme from Eurocrypt um, in the late 90s. Our DEM actually looks at the existing PIN block encryption that is used today um, and does exactly that. So we have our symmetric key encrypted under our PRE scheme, and then we use the symmetric key to create what is practically a, a standard pin block um, encrypting the pin itself. This ensures we have the maximum possible amount of backward compatibility with the existing standards and systems. Our scheme is provably secure and we do this in a model which accurately represents the payment setting. We have further discussion on that in the paper. In addition, we extend literature for PRE schemes by extending uh, recent HRA or honest re-encryption attack models to, to our setting. After introducing our new scheme and proving it's secure, we wanted to look at its performance to see how it matches against the traditional approach. In the traditional approach, when we use an HSM, 
as this is a special hardware appliance, there is the added network latency of making a call from the processing server across to the HSM for doing the pin translation operation. As PRE is a pure software solution, we do not need to make this additional network call. So we have the cost savings, therefore, at each of our hops along the path. You will notice that the, the total latency for our protocol is more than half that of the traditional approach. You might ask why there is no cost for our PRE-based solution at the merchant bank. That's related to the way we perform key management when using a bi-directional scheme. And in fact, we don't need to perform any re-encrypt operation. It just simply acts as a pass-through between the gateway and the network. Further details on our performance evaluation and what it would look like in terms of performance across a migration strategy are given in the paper. Well, let's revisit our goals. So our goals were to reduce the number of HSMs. And we've done that. We've shown that by using the proxy re-encryption, we can all but eliminate HSMs in the online flow, apart from, of course, at the issuing bank where it will still be necessary. Thanks to the security properties of proxy re-encryption, we still ensure that pins only appear in, in clear inside of trusted hardware. Due to the way we've constructed based on the chem-dem paradigm and keeping our dem in line with the existing pin standard, we've ensured the maximum possible backwards compatibility. And then our final goal of ensuring pairwise key setup um, some subtleties there that I've not gone into in this talk, but we do discuss further in the paper, is that when we use a bi-directional PRE scheme, we only achieve this to a partial level. The solution to get full pairwise key setup would be to instead use a unidirectional PRE scheme, but the roadblock in doing that is the efficiency and added costs of doing that. So it's not going to be practical in our payment setting at this current time. 